The war in Ukraine is highlighting the importance of certain weapons, such as anti-aircraft systems. To deny the skies and contain the Russian offensive, the Ukrainians received several Western systems, including the American Patriot and the European SAMP-T, the two main anti-aircraft systems in the West. But between the Patriot and the SAMP-T, both in their most modern versions, which can be considered better. To answer this, we will make a comparison evaluating the Patriot and the SAMP TNG in two different categories, which are detection and engagement. Before we start, I just ask for your registration, as it is essential for us to continue making videos like this. Detection The Patriot has the MPQ-65 radar as its missile search and guidance sensor. It is a passive electronically scanned radar, which is a generation above mechanically scanned radars, but a generation below ESA radars. The overall performance of the MPQ-65 is classified, but ranges of between 100 and 200 kilometers have been unofficially assigned, probably for fighter-sized targets. Larger targets could be detected at greater distances. According to some sources, he may track up to 100 targets and engage up to 9 targets simultaneously. A negative point of the MPQ-65 is the fact that it is not rotatable. The antenna's field of view is 90 degrees for search and up to 120 degrees for missile guidance. The antenna can be moved to a limited extent sideways to track a target, which creates a maximum total coverage of up to 270 degrees, but default operation is with the antenna fixed so full 360 degree coverage cannot be achieved. To ensure complete coverage, multiple Patriot batteries operating in conjunction are required. The SAMP TNG is offered with two radar options. The first is the Ground Fire 300, an ESA radar with a maximum range of 400 km, probably for large targets. Fighter-sized targets must be detected at shorter distances. Up to a thousand targets can be tracked simultaneously but the maximum number of simultaneous engagements has not been disclosed. The antenna rotates 60 times per minute, ensuring 360-degree coverage with an update rate of just one second. The second option is the Kronos Grand Mobile HP, a rotating radar that also uses ESA technology and has a declared maximum range of 250 km for air defense missions or 300 km for surveillance missions. The Kronos Grand Mobile can track up to 500 targets and engage up to 30 targets simultaneously. The antenna rotates 60 times per minute, which guarantees 360-degree coverage with an update rate of just one second. Regarding detection capacity, the advantage clearly belongs to the SAMP TNG. Its active electronically scanned array radar options are a generation above the Patriot's passive electronically scanned array radar, which ensures greater resistance to electronic interference and a lower probability of being detected by radar warning systems. Additionally, they can cover 360 degrees, so there are no blind spots, plus the ability to guide more missiles simultaneously. A new radar is currently being developed for the Patriot system consisting of three flat faces capable of covering 360 degrees, but this sensor should only be fully operational between the end of this decade and the beginning of the following decade. It can be said, therefore, that the SAMP TNG system currently has a superior target detection capability compared to the Patriot. Engagement Once a target is detected and classified as an enemy, engagement occurs. To engage its targets, the Patriot system has a series of different missiles. The main missile for traditional targets, such as combat aircraft, but which also preserves a secondary defense capability against ballistic missiles, is the Pac-2, with a maximum range of 160 km and a maximum altitude of over 20,000 meters. Each launch vehicle can carry up to four Pac-2 missiles. Guidance is done using TVM mode which is a variation of semi-active radar guidance mode. There is also the PAC-3 missile, optimized for ballistic targets, although it can also be used against traditional targets. This missile is much smaller than the PAC-2, 
and can be transported in up to 16 units per launcher. Another difference is that the Pack 3 is guided by active radar. The range of the Pack 3 for traditional targets, such as manned aircraft, is up to 80 kilometers, and against ballistic missiles is approximately 20 kilometers. The maximum altitude is more than 20,000 meters. Finally, there is the Pack 3 MSE, which is an improved version of the Pack 3. The main difference is in the larger diameter engine, which expands its range but also reduces the maximum number of missiles per launcher to 12 units. The Pack 3 MSE can engage traditional targets, such as fighter aircraft, at a maximum distance of between 100 and 120 kilometers and ballistic missiles at a distance of between 40 and 60 kilometers, with these values varying according to the source. The maximum altitude is more than 30,000 meters. Each Patriot battery consists of a total of 6 to 8 launchers. With 6 launchers, a battery carries between 24 and 96 missiles ready for use, depending on the model of missile used, remembering that it is fully possible and even normal to mix different types of missiles per launcher. A battery with 8 launchers could carry between 32 and 128 missiles ready for use depending on the configuration adopted. This is, without a doubt, great combat resistance. The SAMP TNG has the Aster 30 missile as its only interceptor. It is a missile guided by active radar with a maximum range of 150 kilometers and an altitude of over 20,000 meters in its most modern version. The Aster 30 can intercept both traditional targets such as manned aircraft and ballistic missiles, but its specific range against ballistic missiles, which is generally smaller than that for traditional targets, is not reported. Each SAMP TNG battery can be made up of up to six launchers, and each launcher can carry up to eight missiles, totaling a maximum of 48 missiles ready for use. When it comes to engagement, it's hard to pinpoint a clear winner. The maximum engagement range of both systems is quite close, but Patriot can carry a significantly greater number of missiles than the SAMP TNG, and can even mix different types of missiles, which is a huge advantage. However, it has the weakness of not being able to engage targets in 360 degrees, so its advantage of having more missiles ends up limited to specific engagement sectors. The SAMP TNG carries a smaller number of missiles ready for use, but can engage targets in all directions, in addition to being able to guide more missiles simultaneously. Considering this, I would say the Patriot has the advantage against ballistic targets. Ballistic missiles approach from set directions and cannot simply maneuver to approach more favorable directions, so the Patriot's limited coverage doesn't make much of a difference in these cases. Furthermore, the fact that it can launch the Pack 3 MSE, a missile specialized in the role antiballistica, makes Patriot a more suitable system to deal with this type of threat. The SAMP TNG seems to be one best option for dealing with traditional targets. Its 360-degree detection and engagement coverage allows it to better deal with manned aircraft and cruise missiles, which may attempt to bypass terrain to approach from more favorable directions or even attack from opposite directions at the same time. The greater ability to carry out simultaneous engagement is also an advantage for this type of scenario, as traditional threats tend to exist in greater numbers than ballistic threats and could, therefore, saturate the system. In short, the Patriot is at a disadvantage compared to the SAMP TNG due to its previous generation radar and limited search field, but it has the advantage of carrying many missiles, including different types. The SAMP TNG is at a disadvantage in the number and flexibility of missiles, but has the advantage of a more modern radar that allows it to see and fire in all directions. The definition of which is better will therefore depend on the type of scenario in which each one is inserted. Ukraine, at this critical moment, is fortunate to have both systems. And for you, which system can be considered better? Leave your opinion here in the comments. Thank you for watching the video, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel, and see you next time.